In this video, we're going to cover uh, what most poker books do not say about odds and outs. Uh, we're going to look at three different examples. Let's start with the rules of thumb for what they do cover. And that is, uh, if you have one out or one card to go with one out, uh, that translates into approximately a 2% chance of winning. So if you had eight outs, you'd have like a 16% chance. Uh, let's look at this board right here. Okay, we have uh, nine of clubs, eight of clubs, three of diamonds, king of hearts. Now we have one hand that's uh, eights, the other hand is nines. This uh, three of a kind pocket eights has one out. It means there's with one card to go, there's a 2% chance of winning approximately. That means eights is going to win about 2% of the time and nines is going to win 98% uh, of the time. But if uh, we do the, uh, that's by the rule of thumb. Now if we uh, were to take uh, the number of outs, they actually have one out and divided by 44 cards left in the deck, uh, that amounts to a 2.27% uh, equity. But uh, generally we use the rule of thumb because uh, a lot of players that play live don't have uh, smartphone apps or stuff like that where they can look it up. I mean, some of them do now, but at least uh, when I started playing they didn't. Now, uh, delving back into our rules of thumb, if there's uh, two cards to go and you have one out, that translates into approximately uh, a 4% chance of winning for each out. So uh, 10 outs would equate to approximately 40%. Now let's look at uh, what most poker books do not say about odds and outs. And this is the complicated uh, judgment factor that you have to use when you're playing. Um, and that is that they do not account for a relative value. In other words, how much is your hand relatively worth equity-wise compared to that of your opponent? We know from the general rules of thumb how many outs you should have, but uh, if it's down to two players or three players, we don't know what our actual or relative uh, value uh, is. And we're going to take a look at uh, three examples. The first one will be a little bit in depth. Okay, uh, to start off, you know, we have different ranges. Uh, here's one range where it's uh, moderate, uh, here's a tighter range. There is a pretty loose range, and uh, here's a semi-polarized range. Now let's delve into the first example here. We have a uh, board of uh, eight, six, uh, four, uh, two diamonds, and a pot of twenty dollars. Now we have four players in the hand. In our hand, in this case, is nine, seven of clubs. That gives us an open-ended straight draw. Now, if we just go with the uh, two cards to go, one out equates to a 4% chance of winning. So how many outs do we have? Well, we have the 10, we have four 10s, and then we have uh, four fives. Uh, we possibly could have an over card, depending on how the betting goes. But let's just say we have eight outs, okay? Well, those eight outs, uh, eight times four, uh, comes out to around 32% equity. We might actually have more than that, uh, which is, is fairly good. Now let's take a look at uh, how the betting action plays out. Uh, the pot's 20, and player 1 bets 5. Uh, we flat the 5. Player 2 raises to 30. Uh, player 2 is not super loose aggressive. Uh, but we say loose aggressive, but uh, tight when the money goes in. Player 3 is uh, fairly tight when the money goes in, and player 3 shoves all in for uh, $200. Player 1 shoves all in for $200. And it's back to us. Uh, we're assuming that uh, it's, the pot's going to go four ways. And in this case, we have 110 left uh, for whatever reason. We are short stack. So if we figure out the 110 that we have left and uh, multiply it times four, that comes to 440. And then we add the 40 uh, that was our share of the pot before that. That gives a, a pot total of 480, or that's our share of the pot if we call. Now, uh, if we want to calculate how much our hand is worth, we take the 32% equity and we multiply that by the uh, 480 pot size, and that gives us a hand value of $153.60. And uh, that is uh, greater than the 110, uh, so we're getting like a 30, 40% return on our, our money, and you know, about 68% risk, so there's some volatility, but that's a decent return uh, for the risk we're taking. And then it's based on, you know, the, the rules of thumb outs. However, uh, if you play it enough, uh, live or online, uh, you'll notice that uh, 
players have different ranges and behave in certain ways, which means that this 8 outs assumption is probably not a very good one. And our EV might be actually uh, much less than 32%, which might mean it might not be a good idea to call here. And that means the, the 15360 number we came up with is a bogus number that doesn't work and uh, needs to be reevaluated here. Uh, now, why is that? Well, uh, again, it doesn't account for relative value. So, uh, in this case, uh, the way the way I felt, at least when the hand was going live, is that somebody could have a flush draw, which was correct. Uh, so we can eliminate two diamonds, uh, plus there's a redraw if I do hit the straight, or we do hit the straight here. And uh, in this case, uh, two other players had made straights, so the actual EV was around around 14% or so. I can't remember the exact number. But, uh, okay, we have one player with a king four diamonds, uh, and two players with a seven five make the straight. And uh, the actual EV is around 14%. We'll just use the 14% assumption, which if we take 14% times $480 uh, pot size, uh, that makes the hand value worth a 6720, which is much less than the 110 uh, we need to break even on a call, uh, meaning uh, this is a really uh, bad decision to call here. Now let's take a look at uh, a simpler example uh, that happens a little more often. Uh, okay, we have this board of uh, king, queen, uh, five, and there's two hearts. Uh, let's say uh, we have ace, deuce of hearts. Uh, well, that comes out to 12 outs. Uh, 12 times 4 is uh, 48, because uh, there's two cards to go, so we have 4% chance of winning. So it's about a 48% percent or 48% equity. And we got these 12 outs here. Okay, well, um, now let's pretend we run into a juggernaut, such as uh, three of a kind. Our opponent has uh, three kings and is willing to put all the money in with us. Well, with the 48% equity, it might be worth going in. But uh, if our opponent has three kings, uh, that's not such a good idea anymore because our equity value is going to drop. Uh, first off, we can you know take off the aces there. And uh, we can eliminate one of the hearts. It is the five of hearts because the, if the board pairs, uh, our flush is no good. Um, and then whatever happens in the turn, let's say we do hit or we don't hit, uh, our opponent has a redraw to a full house. So uh, the odds go down quite a bit where the actual EV might be around, let's say, 26%. Now let's uh, keep the same board and use a different example here. All right, this time uh, we'll pretend we have uh, Jack, 10 of hearts. And uh, if you look at our outs, just from rules of thumb standpoint, uh, well, there's four aces, uh, four nines, and uh, seven other hearts. Uh, comes out to about 15 outs, uh, 15 times four with the, you know the two cards to go, a one out times four percent. That's 60 uh, percent EV. Okay, well that's based on the rules of thumb. Now let's say we get our money in against an opponent who has let's say ace five of hearts or something to that effect. Well, okay, we can just eliminate all these cards right here. Now we're keeping the nine of hearts because we still have a straight flush draw to that. And uh, we can actually pick up a few outs. We pick up uh, jacks and tens. However, uh, the ace five has the uh, redraw once again, uh, unless it's the nine of hearts where they can hit it in any hearts. So uh, in that case, again, our um, hand is devalued where our actual EV is going to be lower than uh, what we initially calculated. In this case it might be actually a uh, positive EV to get in but it's just uh, one of the things or the nuances and stuff that we have to watch out for when we're playing. We have, you know pay attention to different players uh, ranges and preferences and stuff like that because when we're making assumptions we if we put garbage in uh, Essentially, we're going to get garbage out. So, the, you know, the data that we're using, or their whatever thought process we had to make the assumptions, if, if that's all wrong, then uh, our decisions are going to be wrong or significantly off what we thought they would be. Uh, you know, and the important thing here is we want to uh, try to adjust for uh, different types of ranges that different players may have, 
and uh, you know make adjustments to the rule of thumb based on based on our feel, based on our experience for, for dealing with that kind of stuff. And that's um, those are some of the things that books don't tell you uh, when you start out learning. They'll tell you, okay, you have these outs, you have these percentages and stuff like that. And then when you plan reality, you find out that things are a little bit different sometimes than uh, what you thought they were. And maybe you shouldn't have been so bullish or aggressive uh, putting the money in, in certain spots like that. And other times you'll find out that you had a lot more equity than you thought you did uh, because your opponent was on a draw or something like that. And uh, that essentially uh, wraps up uh, this uh, video. Thank you for watching.